Welcome, everyone, to today's episode of Unlock Your Potential. My name is Steve Picaro. And I'm Barry Rubin. Today, we're going to talk about limiting roadblocks to confidence, or more importantly, how do we boost our confidence by navigating and going around some of those things that may block our confidence building ability. It's interesting, Barry and I were talking about this confidence, what saps it one day and recharges us the, another day. Is there a common theme? Is there something that is going on around us? Is it is it magic or is it just our daily life? So I think our discussion today, we were going to share some high level thoughts, share some tips and some strategies and really think about what are some of the things we do that may pull our confidence down or sap our confidence? Um, and then more importantly, what can we do to bring that back up? There's a couple things that come to mind when we're talking about uh, undermining our confidence. Sometimes we may criticize ourselves. Uh, we, we, we don't think we can do anything right. Maybe we have a, a string of bad luck. Maybe when we look in the mirror, we notice flaws and all, and that's what we focus on. And I think for some people, um, yep, we, we, we look in the mirror and we're saying, dang, that's, I'm looking at my flaw. How about social media? How does that play a part? What are all the wonderful influencers doing? What are all the successful people doing? Why aren't I doing that? And then more importantly, what are we doing that we were not doing, but we're preventing ourselves from moving forward? Is it an aspiration, a dream? Are we trying to achieve a goal, but we just can't get that momentum up? Barry, is there anything I missed when you think about, are we undermining our confidence going forward? Anything come to mind for you? Um. Well, the two things that came to mind as you were creating that verbal list were um, comparing yourself to other people and surrounding yourself with the wrong people. Those right. are the two things that came up for me. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny, you know, if we think about what's the difference between self-confidence, high confidence and somebody without it? Or somebody who's who's ready to go, but they're afraid to take that next step. How do we build that that belief in ourselves? How do we accept ourselves as we are? How do we become a little bit more of a risk taker? If we need to break that, if it's holding us back, how about thinking positively? Do we get used to seeing the, the dark side of things versus the positive side? How about are we persistent, determined, tenacious, or some degree? Do we have a goal or are we moving in a direction where we're trying to, to reach a target? You know, in the past, we've talked about it's hard to hit a target if you don't know what it is. And I know there are things and times in our life, personally and professionally, where we may be going around this rotary, waiting for something to happen, or maybe we're at a crossroads or a rotary. Sometimes it's multiple uh, roads leading in different directions, and we're not sure. That energy, that momentum, I think for me, does drain my confidence after a while. So sometimes there are things that we can do that recharge our confidence. I know I just had a discussion this morning about getting ready to go backpacking. I've shared this before on some of these trips, right? I'll look at this mountain and say, man, that's a tall mountain. It looks tough. I don't know if I'm up for it. But if I start thinking I can't do it, of course, I'm going to reach that goal. If I start thinking I'm going to get in shape for it because I want to achieve it, I want to get up there, I am going to make it. It really is a mind over matter type approach. One of the big things that we've talked about in the past 
accepting ourselves as we are. Um, think about listening to our voice the first time we got voicemail answering services. Uh, no one liked that. No one liked how they sounded. And then when we got video cameras and we're like, oh, is that what I look like? I don't think I like the way I look. And the funny thing is other people, and I've asked, right? What do, what do you think of this picture? And they're like, oh, you look fine. What are you talking about? So I th sometimes there's self-doubt. Barry was in the in the movie business, the makeup business. Barry, what did you do when you had to work with people who didn't think they were the right part for a role? How did how did you help people or make them feel good about themselves using your skills? You know, it's funny that you should ask me that because the whole time that I was in the beauty industry in general, whether it was working retail or working in hospitality and spa or working on set, the joke was that when you work that closely with people and their appearance, you're really more of a psychologist than a magician. <laughs> and uh, there was a movie that I worked on where halfway through shooting, somebody let it slip that one of the actresses that I was working with was actually the director's second choice for the role. And they said, but don't ever tell her that. And knowing that the way I spoke with her, I mean, the way I spoke with everybody, I was always I was so happy to be there and so loved what I was doing that, you know, I, I have a very positive attitude and a very happy outlook. And I was glad to be there and always try to, you know, give people the right side of the bed when they were getting ready to go in the morning. And that could be difficult when it's 4 a.m. and you're standing in mud during El Nino on a ranch. But mm. somehow I managed. And it's interesting that, you know, I left that field and went to do other things. And when I moved back east, I stumbled into a TV pilot. And after the pilot was over, the director said to me, I loved having you on set. You were such a ray of sunshine. Your positive energy was infectious. And I think that was because I felt like I was in the right place. I was where I was supposed to be, doing what I was supposed to be doing. And I just wanted everybody to be in that mindset. And so when you exude that positive energy and you show up with a good spirit, people notice it. And so I think that that chemistry really is the basis, you know, if, if because um, in the case of the entertainment industry, actors and actresses are blank slates, or they're supposed to be blank slates, and they're supposed to remember their lines, but then put their humanity into it. So when you get them into the right mindset, either by staying quiet and let them study their lines or being a sounding board when they're going through their lines or taking their mind off whatever happened before they got there, all those little things add up to help create that environment. So for me, it was just exuding positive energy, but it's not something I had to try to do. It was just me. So yeah. that's a long answer to a short question. No, no. But you know what? It is a, a little bit of a journey because we all do it differently. Uh, I think part of this sometimes is I know, um, are we hard on ourselves? Do we, Absolutely. Give, <laughs> do we give compassion to other people, our pets, other people? I remember my wife years ago, a new restaurant opened and I've worked in the restaurant industry in the past, and of course I'm um, generous, but I just, I said, geez, boy, she's taking a long time. The service just isn't up to snuff. I wonder what's going on. And my wife said, oh, maybe it's her first day or maybe it's her first restaurant job. But I said, it's possible. But it's funny how my wife was always looking for the the, the right side of things, right? So sometimes we're willing to be compassionate for other people before ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes with this confidence, we have to give ourselves a break. And 
I think sometimes we criticize ourselves as a default mode, again, mm -hmm. for many reasons, right? It, you know, you think about our, our upbringing, our experiences personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some people um, have very demanding situations, right? Where my wife, another perfect example, she always felt like if she got anything less than an A, she was not performing to her best. So one day she got an A minus and her dad gave her this look like, Susan, what's up with this A minus? And I used to joke and I used to say, hey, if I got a C, the best Rodney Dangerfield, A, B, a C, you're in the top three. What's the, what's the problem? And um, it, it's funny sometimes on perspective, but I think being compassionate with yourself is the beginning of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and we've said this, you know, I love this approach, especially when we talk about affirmations, right? Being, um, our, our goal is progress, not perfection, realizing that we are a work in progress. There are some things I do fairly well because I've been doing it a long time. And then there are other things I'm still learning. And I think as we go through this, how do we look at the positive things? Do you use any positive affirmations? Do you tell yourself, do you have any mantra, you know, when the going get tough, the tough get going? What do you tell yourself, Barry? Um, I use negative reinforcement. because <laughs> Basically, I find myself sometimes, I catch myself doing something wrong or being negative and I have to tell myself to stop it. You know, um, I, I try to, to keep the <clears throat> voice in my head quiet because usually it's piping up to say something negative. Um, but to your point about compassion for yourself, I recently read an article that was very enlightening. It was brief. It was, uh, I think it was a caption on an Instagram post as a matter of fact, but it talked about the difference when you're nice between kindness and people pleasing. Mm. And I think um, when you when you have those difficult experiences growing up and you turn into a people pleaser, it's hard to be kind because you're beating yourself up if you don't do something correctly. And I think that's a very important distinction to make. I learned the hard way that I am not kind. I am a people pleaser and there is a huge difference. I'm not a bad person. I'm not a mean person, but I'm a people pleaser, not a kind person. So my lesson for myself was to be kind. And that includes me because, I mean, how many times have you heard people tell somebody you're your own worst enemy? I'm my own worst enemy sometimes. Yeah, and I think we all are. And it's it's funny when we talk about positive affirmations or self-talk, there's a few things. And again, I think back when my boys were younger and we talked about, um, um, we were coaching them, whether it was scouting or soccer, and I was helping young people develop. And we talked about, again, we're, we're going to make mistakes and that's okay, right? Because we want to practice makes perfect. We understood that. There were certain things uh, especially in sports, right? You think about, I think I shared with you, uh, I went to a, a funeral recently and I met my coach from when I was 12. Wow. And um, it was amazing. It was like it brought back all these memories. And mm -hmm. you would think about uh, playing sports or musical instrument or my wife as an artist, you keep practicing the same things over and over. And yet some way, somewhere along the line, we're expected to do something once perfectly the first time. So I I always, for me, you know, we can't stop the waves, but we can learn to surf. Um, I, if I don't win, I learn, right? So I would take this and say, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm human. Everyone does. Um, I use it as a learning moment. In some ways, I think part of it was changing my outlook on our views on being perfect, making mistakes and failure. I think this is part of it too. 
when we look at what saps that confidence, no one is perfect, but sometimes we aspire to be perfect, right? Aren't we shooting for perfection sometimes? And I remember talking, I'm reading Good to Great, and talk about this book about sometimes 70% is good enough to get this idea off the ground. And I think for me, growing up, I think I had, and again, whether it was people I worked with, uh, people I was exposed to, realizing that goal of perfection was unattainable. So I, I, I don't know if I shared this, Barry, when I was working in the OR in the Navy, um, I learned this great saying, um, the enemy of good is better. And hmm. I remember the surgeon said that to me. And we were we were doing some type of general surgery. And I said, Dr. So-and-so, what do you mean by that? He said, if I am trying to make this um, closing the wound, trying to make this stitch look perfect, I can sit here for an hour trying to do this. But remember, the patient's under anesthesia. The mm -hmm. tissue only has so much that it can give. He said, I can sit here. We're at this fine line. If we go at 92% efficacy to get to 93, it's going to take a lot of energy, resources, time. Mm -hmm. And there's no guarantee it's going to work. So that was a big waking aha moment for me. I was like, oh, my gosh. And we've seen examples of that in the surgery. You know, oh, I'm going to put one more stitch in or I'm going to do something like that. And I've seen it in my own life. I can fit one more. I can fit one more thing in and then it goes. And the other thing I, I think for me, and this was part of this maturing learning process for all of us, right? This is why, you know, we have this wisdom and insight because we learn from our experience. A mistake is not a failure. Everyone makes mistakes. Doesn't mean we're a failure. But I know for a long time, I felt like that. And that was a difference, you know? I mean, all you have to do is turn on the radio, the TV, go online, companies, politicians, celebrities, sports team, everybody. I can't name or think of anyone who hasn't made a mistake. And yet, we hold ourselves up to a standard that's unattainable. If you stop and think about it, you're like, where did that come from? So in one way, how do we remove the word failure from our vocabulary and and focus more on our progress? And I think that's a tough one, too. And I think part of it is taking risk. Again, when I work with young people, I know I've worked with some people who were so afraid of making mistakes that it was hard for them to, to think about it even coloring outside the lines, you know, because it's not right. Oh, so that how do we, nuts. <laughs> right. But, but how do we change our approach from risk taking to I'm afraid to I'll try? That I think is the big, you know what? I think, and, and it happens small ways. I mean, Barry, you shared different recipes, you shared different things. We've all, as an adult, we know that we can try these little experiments and it gives us confidence to kind of gradually build those steps up to that next level. Right. When did we stop doing that? Why did we stop doing it? Is there a risk versus reward ratio? I don't know. It's really hard. How do we, how do we take those little risks how do we build that little confidence, that momentum? I do know there are times when we take a risk, we get a little bit of success, and then something happens and we slide back a step mm -hmm. or, or we hit this plateau. And it's hard sometimes to think, okay, am I going to go right back? I'm a failure. I'm, I'm imperfect. So... I don't know. Any thoughts? Any any plateauing in your life? Have you ever had a plateau? <laughs> I feel like I live in a plateau sometimes. 
But you know what? I, I do have uh, several very dear friends who accept me as I am and always see the good in me no matter what. And sometimes they magically call me at just the right moment. And other times I feel the need to reach out because I need a pep talk. And I think the key is learning how to give yourself a pep talk so you don't have to rely on other people. Right. Well, the positive affirmation, the visualization. I mean, I think of some of the things I've accomplished in my life. And like everyone's life, we're going to have the ups, we're going to have the downs, and we're going to have the in-betweens. And I think setting those goals um, allows us to do that, whether it's planning dinner, uh, achieving a task, getting in shape for a hike, any, any project. Sometimes some goals are loftier than others. Um, during our, our talks and some of the calls, I've talked about using SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely or time-based. And that recipe, I think, works well um, for many different things. And setting goals is important to help us move from one place to another. If we don't move in a forward direction, we are going to go in this rotary of life and we get caught there waiting for something to say, get off here. Um, yes, friends are helpful. Colleagues are helpful. There are going to be defining moments in your life where you're saying, I need to take that risk. I need to get to that next stop. Mm -hmm. um, when we think about how do we reward ourselves? How do we praise ourselves when we reach our goals? There are little things we can do, you know, whether it's taking a few minutes, getting a treat, watching a movie, doing something for yourself is important. I think sometimes we we oscillate, right? We go from one end to the other, but even getting up and exercising even going out and, and getting something done is very important. And I don't think they have to be, you don't have to hit a home run every time you're in bat. Sometimes it's just getting on base. And I don't know if it's our culture, our society, the messaging. I know we're inundated with a lot of different messages. And how do we, how do we balance that? I like to think of and I've, I've, I've shared this before. We were doing a webinar about this pearl, how, how a, uh, an oyster makes a pearl. You know, you have that little grain of sand. And over time, there's this little coating of mother of pearl. I think our confidence is like that, right? We want that pearl of confidence. It may start off as a grain of sand, but if you start looking at things from a different perspective saying... And this is the part that's interesting. When you look at the mirror, are you seeing yourself for who you really are or what other people are telling you you should be? Mm -hmm. I think, I think <clears throat> um, regarding SMART, um, measurable and attainable is a very important piece of that puzzle because I think... You know, that's where the expression you bit off more than you can chew comes from. If you set a goal that is so far ahead of you that there's no way that you can reach it unless you break it down incrementally, wouldn't it be smarter to create those incremental steps as goals along the way? Uh, I will never forget watching the movie What About Bob in the 90s. Mm. And he brought a whole new meaning to the phrase baby steps. And sometimes when I, sometimes I kick myself because I set a goal that's too big and I'm like, baby steps to the kitchen, baby steps to the front door. And I start reciting the script of what about Bob? Because I realize that I'm, my chunks are too big. And I think a lot of people get so wrapped up in the big picture that they forget to step back and realize you can't jump to the finish line. You have to get there first to go over it. Yeah. You know what? It's funny. Um, I think of um, finding Nemo and Dory's like, just keep, just keep swimming. swimming. 
you know, <clears throat> but it's kind of funny, you know, when the kids were learning to swim, that was the whole thing, right? The goal was, we just want you to be comfortable in the water and then you'll be able to swim, right? And not, not drown. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> part of this is, I think this, this is all about mindset, right? When we think about confidence, we have to stop comparing ourselves to others because mm -hmm. that's, that really is the downfall. Easier said than done. Sometimes, you know, we have to purposely, strategically do that. Mm -hmm. um, other Some people are born with excess confidence or abundance of confidence. Other people have to develop it like a muscle. That's okay. It's not better or worse. It's just different. The other, um, the other category is too much or not enough. There's also that phenomenon of false bravado, where people right. who don't have confidence, you know, fake it till you make it. They over <clears throat> fake it and they can come across completely differently than they really are because they're projecting something that's not true to themselves. Yeah, well, so here's here's another thing. And I know we've we've talked a little bit about this in the past when we help others sometimes people with less confidence than we do, we become aware that everyone struggles and everyone's confident level is different. I think I shared, I was working with a client once who was very, very confident. She just assumed everybody had that confidence because her prayer groups of professionals, colleagues were all very confident people. And if you're playing professional sports, or you're you're flying with those people who have a high level of confidence, that's kind of the impression you just assume because those are the people in your circle. Mm -hmm. But when you realize that there are people all over the spectrum when it comes to confidence, everyone's struggling in some ways. You may have people who are very confident in some areas and not so confident in other areas, and that's normal too. I think it's rare to find someone confident on every level at every skill set. And that's, there are a, a few people that are like that, but that's very rare. Right. The, the other thing that I had to learn was accepting compliments. Um, I didn't think I was worthy when people said, oh, hey, nice job, Steve. Thanks, whatever. I didn't know how to accept that. And that was a weird thing. Um but it's part of that process. People who complimenting are enjoying, um, we're enjoying that our impact was meaningful to them. And that was important to us because I didn't think I was worthy at some point. And then over time, I realized, well, if people are thanking me or they keep coming back, this was when I was kind of breaking out of that shell, right? That that awkward teenager year. Mm -hmm. Um how do we practice gratitude for things that we have done physically, emotionally, mentally, right? I think being appreciative is something too, that it is a process. And at mm -hmm. this point, how do we step back? And Barry, I think I shared this with you. I love looking at some of the photos um, that I have from my hikes. I, I'm always taking photos now that we everyone has a camera. Years ago, it was different because you had to carry all that gear. But not only am I taking pictures of where I'm going, but I, I always enjoy stopping and turning around and take a picture of where I'm coming from. That always reminds me that, say, I did that. I've accomplished that. I achieved that. Sometimes we have to do that in our lives personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I sometimes, especially, you know, when, when something goes wrong physically with your body and you recover, you have to thank your body for recovering and thank the universe, thank somebody. And I think um, specifically for women, I think women have a really hard time accepting that, gratitude coming at them or those compliments. I mean, how many times have you heard somebody compliment a woman and then she just goes into a whole story of why she didn't deserve the compliment? Just 
say thank you. Yeah, but that, you know what? I think one of our next episodes is going to be the care div- care um caregiver's dilemma, right? We're so busy taking care of others and a lot of women who are caregivers fall into that. Mm-hmm. So that's another topic, but it is interesting when we talk about being optimistic, how do we go from that pessimistic to that optimistic? We mm-hmm. want to look at things as a new opportunity going forward. And that's kind of changing your default mode, right? We can look at everything saying, oh, I'll I'll never be successful. I'll never succeed to, I'm going to try that. I'm going to move out of this comfort zone. I'm going to stretch my wings a little bit. And again, just like that, that butterfly that comes from that cocoon, that struggle is what pumps the blood up to those butterfly wings so it can fly away. If we don't have those little struggles, and we all have them, physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, there are things that we overcome. That's what's giving us the, the, the strength, the courage, the confidence, the clarity to move forward. Mm. And at the end of the day, um, I think this is the biggest one or the biggest tip we can share is be patient with yourself. Many of us have been traveling on this path for a long time. We got a long journey ahead. Are we going to take a break? Are we going to stumble? Are we going to make mistakes? Of course we are. But you know what's so interesting? Again, most of us are willing to overlook other people's mistakes all the time. How come we don't overlook our own? Once you learn to do that, all of a sudden, the shift comes from being perfect to going forward. And I look at people who've overcome that and it's amazing what they've accomplished because of their stick to their determination and their tenacity, not because they were perfect. So there's a lot of different ways to measure this, this movement, this confidence, remove those confidence suckers and do more of the things you're good at, that's going to help you be more successful. And on occasion, take a few risks, but realize, you know, that's okay. It's a learning moment. Mm -hmm. Do you have any learning moment tips, Barry? Anything that you've learned on your journey? I know you've shared some. Oh, boy. I mean, not a day goes by where I don't learn something, whether it's you know, adding a few extra minutes because I didn't turn on preheat first and burning it by mistake because I didn't need it to um, being upfront and open and talking to somebody and telling them the truth instead of what they want to hear. When that goes well, it's helpful. Sometimes it doesn't go well, but when you think about it, you know, if if I didn't do anything wrong and there's nothing I could have done differently, I can't always control the outcome. The only thing that I can control is how I show up. And I think that's a lesson that we learn over and over and over. And, and it just happens all the time. Well, um, well, to that point, Barry, not to interrupt you, but, you know, attitude is so important you know, when we look at this, right, our attitude is going to help set that tone for us. Are we going in there preparing to win, to lose, or to learn? Mm -hmm. And for me, shifting that to a learning attitude and realizing, and you've heard me say this, right, we want to overcome, adapt, and improvise. That's kind of like that mindset. I know I'm going to get stuck. I know I'm not going to win all of these things, but I know, was it, who, who, who was it? Was it Michael Jordan who said, I'm going to miss every free shot I don't take? Hmm. You You know, shots you don't take. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting when you think about that. And it's true. I mean, a lot of profound people out there. Yeah. Uh, but I but I think it's also making the decision of which which shots to take, 
Because sometimes you can't, you cannot take all of them. So sometimes you've got to stop, assess the situation, and then make your decision. A lot of times we, we don't, you have patience in making decisions. We just take the first option or we take what we think is the path of least resistance. It may not always be. There is a saying that says, right is easy and easy is right. And I do believe that to a certain extent. Sometimes things in life can be challenging, but if you approach it from that right is easy, easy is right, then if you get resistance, maybe it's time to step back and do it differently or go a different way instead of sticking to the decision that you made. I mean, we're human. We're allowed to change our minds. We're allowed to change the way we do things. And I think sometimes people get stuck in a rut in thinking and in doing. So sometimes that confidence comes from making a change and seeing that it didn't turn out as bad as you thought it would. That's a confidence builder. Right. All right. So let's wrap it up. I'll, uh, I'm going to review just as a, a summary of, you know, in terms of boosting self-confidence and, and putting together an action plan, because I always like, you know, what are you taking away from today's episode, right? Mm-hmm. If you do one thing to help you move forward, then then you're on the right track. We talked about being compassionate with yourself. To me, that's the first step, understanding that, you know what, we're all going to struggle at times and that's okay. I'd like the idea of using positive affirmations. And again, there's a million out there. Find a couple that resonate with you. And at the end of the day, they're going to become that mantra, that creed, that motto to help you move forward. Um, Positive visualization is always a good way to to look at certain things, right? Are we visualizing success? And sometimes it's great when you have a picture because you don't have to visualize it. It's on my board. It's on my wall. It's on my mirror, right? I know what I'm shooting for. Think about our self-talk. Are we psyching ourselves up? Are we psyching ourselves out? Are we coaching ourselves? Are we our own cheerleader? Or are we listening to other people and other things? And of course, there are going to be times we want to listen, Barry, to your point. We want our friends and colleagues and and family to chime in. But remember, we got to listen to ourselves. Right. How do we turn this negative thinking into positive thinking, right? Sometimes it's flipping that switch and changing our default mode. It's easy to say, oh, I see a hole in the ground. I'm stuck. I can't go over it versus I'm going to build a bridge I'm going to figure out how I can get over that. But once you do it a few times, it's easy to make that shift. We also, I think, what is perfectionism, mistakes, failures? What are we stuck on? What are the words that we that guide us? Do we have to update our view on that? Mm-hmm. Because I know we talked about uh, being a perfectionist, right? Oh, there, you know, and I've heard people say, I'm a perfectionist. There are times when you want to do that. And there are times when you don't. How do you balance that? If it's holding you back and you're afraid of failure, then we have to figure out how do we take that small risk? Um, I, I, I think I shared this when I was working with scouts. I love teaching them how to tie a knot because that was such a great confidence builder tie a simple knot nobody got hurt nobody you know it's a little piece of string you tie one knot you tie two knots and before you know it you tie three knots it was such a great tool figure out what you can do what are you going to do maybe it's tying a knot maybe it's trying a new recipe just go out a little bit set those goals i think they're important even a small goal is a goal. And as Barry just mentioned, five little goals get you to that one big goal. Um, and, and it is incrementally. Maybe that is your pearl that you're working on, right? One layer at a time. 
think about how do we praise and reward ourselves, whether it's doing something special for us, doing something special for somebody else. Sometimes giving back is a great reward uh, of your time, but don't be afraid to put yourself first, as we've talked about in the past. Barry mentioned this earlier, identify support systems, friends, colleagues, websites, community groups, religious organizations, civic organizations, veterans organizations. Who do we go to that we can uh, share our energy and thoughts and at times borrow energy and support from them when we need it. I think that's something that would really help us um, as a group going forward. Uh, another big one, and it's hard to do, social media makes it hard, television, right? How do we stop comparing ourselves to other people? When mm -hmm. everything you read is look like this, be like this, do this. <laughs> It's almost I, so ingrained. How do I we get back? I was going to say FOMO culture is just, it's that is like the biggest downside of social media. I don't think it really even existed before social media, a little bit with television or well, um, aspirational well, lifestyles in the movies, but. Well, having, what, what was that magazine women used to get? Um, the, uh, what was that movie? A magazine with all the models on it. My what? Which one you were? I don't know which people. <laughs> no, no. What's that? That fashion magazine. Um, There's a whole bunch of them. There's Vogue, Cosmopolitan, Vogue. Glamour. I think it Harper's was Cos Bizarre. All right. So those magazines, my wife would read them and see them, and those top three, I think, did more to impact women's self-esteem you know, going forward. So, so stop comparing yourself to others, um, help others who are feeling less confident. That's a great way to teaching someone how to tie knots was a great boost to help me tie knots. I think it's funny how even cooking, right? Helping people cook was something I could help to help people. Um, accept compliments with a smile and say, thank you. Again, simple reminders. Right. Practice gratitude for what we have, which is interesting. Uh, again, we've in the past, people have talked about this. I need this. I need this. Sometimes we forget we're grateful for what we have. Um, be optimistic about all these new opportunities that come our way. You know, it's great when you look at something and say, how do I make that an opportunity? And more importantly, with all these things, remember to be patient with ourselves. I think part of it is, I wish I could flip a switch. I wish I had the winning lottery ticket. I wish I had the secret code to success. But when it comes to confidence, there is no quick fix. Right. It's the, the pearl, that wisdom, that confidence will build over time. Any final thoughts, Barry, before we wrap it up today? No, I, I think, I, you know, I, I really enjoy being the uh, sounding board for these podcast sessions because it's all stuff you know in your head and sometimes you just forget it and all you need is a reminder. So I hope that everybody listening taps into all these things that were already there that they might have forgotten about. Dust that book off the shelf and read a few pages, the mental shelf and mental book and mental pages, not real books, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah. And to your point, Barry, you know what? It, it is nice to, to hear it once in a while. It is nice to be reminded, sometimes out of sight, out of mind, right? It's all about Toma, top of mind awareness. You know, whatever we can do to to sharpen this confidence and, and reduce these these things that suck that confidence, I think is good for everyone. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. We're going to wrap it up. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everybody.